Welcome to People in Time from the Department of History at Lancaster University, where we introduce you to historical figures from our research and teaching who help us to see the other side of history. I'm Will Pettigrew. I'm an historian of global Britain at Lancaster, and I'd like to introduce you to a man whose story connects the three regions of the transatlantic trade and enslaved human beings, and introduces us to the role of freedom in developing and then abolishing that trade. William Cesaracu was the son of Enu Basi Carency, the head of a leading Fante gold and slave trading family in West Africa. Cesaracu grew up in the Royal African Company's fort at Anama Bo, located in present-day Ghana. What was the Royal African Company? Founded in 1672 as a joint venture between the Duke of York, King Charles II's brother, and the future King James II, and leading London merchants, the company had a monopoly over all English trade with West West Africa. It shipped cloth, guns and alcohol to West Africa to exchange for enslaved Africans who were transported to Barbados and Jamaica. The company shipped more enslaved Africans than any other organisation during the entire period of that trade, a figure of nearly 150,000. Although the company did not ship many enslaved people to mainland North America, this figure amounts to about half of all the slaves transported from Africa to what is now the United States of America. To cement its commercial relationship with Cesaracu's father, the company arranged for William to travel to England to be educated. Cesaracu, however, was tricked and sold into slavery in Barbados by an independent slave trader in 1744. These free trading slave traders were frustrated by the Royal African Company's monopoly. In the late 17th century, they had formed a lobby to persuade the courts and parliament to deregulate the company's monopoly, claiming that the right to trade in enslaved Africans was a cherished English liberty. By 1712, the company's monopoly had been destroyed as free traders sent their own ships in increasing numbers to West Africa. The result was a trebling in the numbers of enslaved Africans transported to the Caribbean and across the entire period of the slave trade, an additional 1.5 million Africans enslaved. Again, mindful of its business connections with his father, the Royal African Company arranged to have Cesaracu freed and brought him to London, where his presence attracted great interest amongst fashionable society. Cesaracu dined with the nobility, met the royal family, and marvelled at the theatre in Covent Garden, while Londoners in turn marvelled at him, labelling him as an African prince. The Royal African Company used Cesaracu's status to amplify their own royal associations. The company's support for Cesaracu enabled them to suggest that their regulated version of slave trading was more humane than the free version developed by the independent merchants. The Royal African Company continued to operate through to the 1750s. It maintained forts along the West African coast and unsuccessfully tried to establish plantations and mine for gold in the region. In the 1730s and 40s, it began to suggest that it upheld the interests of African peoples, nurturing the public's growing unease with the brutalities of the slave trade. The company used the story of William Cesare Coup to promote this point of view. Wound up in 1752, the company's belief that the evils of the slave trade derived from the ending of its monopoly influenced the politics of abolition. By demonstrating that too much freedom in the slave trade had increased its brutality.